All right, welcome to removing objects using content to wear fill. And, uh, and then after we do that, I'm going to show you some other little tricks on how to clean some things up. So you should start by downloading the Japanese garden file, which is uh, a JPEG. So as soon as you've downloaded it and opened it up in Photoshop, then you should go to File and pick Save As. Change it from Start to Working and save it into your Photoshop One folder. Please make sure before you do that, change it to a Photoshop file. Don't let it stay as a JPEG. Okay, so um, I've already saved this twice as a matter of fact, so I'm gonna hit cancel, but you hit save. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this background. So uh, we duplicate the background. I use Command-J for the Mac, Control-J for the PC, and we change the layer one to Rock Fix. All right, because we are going to remove this rock right here. At least we're going to try to. Let's zoom on in on the rock and the reflection. So I'm going to hit Z for zoom. I get the zoom tool. I have scrubby zoom turned on, but you know what? I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to draw a box with the zoom tool around the rock and its reflection. Boom. There it is. Okay. So, next, hit L for the lasso, and make sure that you have this regular lasso tool, not the polygonal or magnetic, the regular lasso tool, and change the feathering to 25. Now, 25 pixels for feathering is quite a bit, so we are going to give it a bit of room around the rock, which is going to allow for the feathering. The feathering allows uh, you to basically go uh, to uh, blend the two parts together. So we're going all the way around. We're trying to give it a 25 pixel uh, bit of leeway there. And coming on around here like that. Awesome. If you just let go, it draws a straight line to where you're at. And there it is. Excellent. So it is now selected. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to see there's two different ways you can do, uh, you can do uh, a content-aware fill. The first one, if you go up to edit, is the one that I use constantly all the time. It's fill, and rather than filling it with a color, I just pick content where, color adap uh, adaptation turned on, and I hit OK. And it just does uh, uses artificial intelligence to try to pick. That did not work that well, did it? No, it didn't. Command Z to undo. By the way, the shortcut for content or for filling something is Shift delete and it brings up this that is so helpful we're going to be using that one all the time when we work on people's faces all right so if that didn't work what about the other method which is edit and you go down here and you pick content aware fill and it brings up a special window too as a matter of fact you've got the uh, this area here and uh, the preview of what it's going to look like. All right, so first of all, sometimes uh, it'll, it'll entirely depend on what your settings are when you arrive here, and uh, you should click on Auto if you can. Now, what has this done? Well, first of all, uh, we need to zoom on out. So. I wonder if I go Command Z. Oh yeah, I um, miss uh, Command Zero. Totally worked. Awesome. Okay, so basically what you're seeing here is it is saying that see the green part that's all filled in. Okay, it's taking that area and it's saying okay, well we're going to use what that stuff looks like in order to fill in where the rock is. And you can see right here 
that it and so so. It's actually pretty darn close to the content aware fill that we used at first. But watch this. Okay, so you want to pick, make sure that you have the sampling brush tool and the minus sign and change this to 700. And then I want you to just kind of go around and remove the parts, little bits by bits here of the, uh, of the area up top. And you'll notice, see how the rock has now changed right here. So it doesn't have as much foliage in there. And you can play around with it. You can actually just do that. And you'll notice that it's really not changing too much now because it's really only taking from this area, which is pretty close to being the same. Now, if you decide, oh, in actual fact, I want to try having a little bit more of the rock part, then hit the plus sign. And you can even change the size of your brush. By the way, you can change brush size by square brackets. So square bracket, or the left square bracket makes it smaller. The right square bracket makes it bigger. Okay, I'm going to go smaller. And I'm actually just going to paint some green onto this part right here just to see whether or not that did anything. And it didn't. Okay, you know what? That's enough playing with that. It basically is saying, yeah, I think I got it right here. Oh, it actually did update, add a little bit more rock in there, and I don't like it. If you hold down the Option key, it switches to the opposite brush, so the plus or minus. So, Okay. Now, I think that's pretty much all we can do at the moment. And so we're going to say, okay. Now, you'll notice that the rock fix copy layer has been created and you'll also notice if I turn it off and on exactly what it's done. See right there? Okay so a couple of things. First of all uh, let's change the rocks rock fix copy to uh, rock fix more and hit turn. There it is. Okay Always name your layers what it is that you're going to do, and we are going to fix that more. So this is selected. Let's deselect it. Command D. Control D for the PC. Okay, so we have, uh, we need to get the, uh, the ripples in the water onto this area right here. So let's just pick the stamp tool. S for stamp. And let's hit the right square bracket to make this a little bit bigger. I've got this brush is currently set at 150. It also has a hardness of zero. And uh, I'm going to take the opacity and put it up to 100 right now. Then what I'm going to do, actually, let's zoom in a little bit. Z to zoom. And I like the scrubby zoom. So we'll go in here like that. Let's get Creative Cloud out of there. Okay, good. Space bar to give you the hand and S to go back to the stamp tool. Good, so what are we gonna copy here? Let's actually start copying uh, about this area here. Hold down the Option key or the Alt key on a PC and you see this little target? We're gonna click around this area right here and then I'm going to let go, and it shows me what it's going to copy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and work a little bit in here. Oh, by the way, um, you want to make sure that your sample is set to current and below or all layers. If you're just on the current layer, well, then that is just going to be working off of this. So that's empty, so nothing's gonna happen. So yeah, you better make sure that you're on all layers or current and below. Anyway, so back to painting. I'm gonna stay away from the shoreline right now. And I'm going back and forth. Make sure I don't add the fish too much. And then I'm going to reset, hold down the Option key, I'm going to click 
Hmm, maybe I'll go over here. I'm going to click about here. See, because this is what it's painting in, right? Got to make sure I don't start painting in the fish. And back and forth. If you go too far, you'll start adding in rock, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to reset, uh, and maybe right about here. There, and let's start painting this in. And basically, I want you to just paint most of this rock away. I'm going to go on fast forward. Okay, we got the uh, water done to a certain amount, like this part around here. Now it comes uh, to doing the shoreline. So again, we're going to hit the stamp tool, S for the stamp tool, and I'm going to look around on the shoreline area for uh, plants and that kind of thing that might be able to be about the same. And I think probably I'm going to pick well, that plant's too close because then it's going to obvious be, obviously be a part of that. Maybe I will pick a little bit of this. So I'm going to hold down the option key and click on there. I'm going to hold it over top. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then we'll go along here, dab a little bit. Maybe make this brush a little smaller. A little smaller and get in here a little bit. Okay, now you'll notice I did add in a bit of rock there, but that's okay because I'm going to paint over it with the bits of the shoreline. Okay, I need more shoreline. Where can I do that? Let's take a look and see. Is there any other bits of shoreline that I can copy? Not a whole lot to tell you the truth. So I think I'm just going to have to grab little bits of this rock here. And so I'm going to zoom on in. And I'm going to hit S for the stamp tool. And I'm going to uh, option click about here. And we're going to match this to the little bit of rock that's there. And whoop! Oh, I got the edge of the, of the file. So not going to work on that. But you know what? I like that match. So maybe I will just grab a little bit more of this bush, put it over top, grab a little bit of water, put it in here. There we go. That's starting to work. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this side. I'm going to add that and then add a little bit more bush over top of it. Nice. Okay, that's starting to work. Great. So the next thing that we're doing, now that we've created the shoreline, is we are actually going to play around with some of the settings for the stamp tool. So, take a look. First of all, let's set the opacity. Now, we're going to set the opacity to about 20. because We're doing a reflection here. Okay, so 20 is the opacity. So when you're painting it on, it's only painting a small amount over top of that. The next thing that we're going to do too is I want you to go into the settings for your clone source. Take a look at this and you will see that you can flip this. You can flip it horizontal or you can flip it vertical. I want you to flip it vertical. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to select the uh, this area up here. Hold down the option key and click on it. And I'm paint in a little bit. See, there it is. Dab little bits in. Dab little bits in. Not a whole lot. There it is. Now we have a reflection. Isn't that cool? Okay, so we're going to also grab a little bit over here. Maybe paint a bit. There, like that. You don't want to do too much, and I'm getting there close to doing too much. All right. There it is. So there's our reflection. I think that I'm going to go back up to 100%. Flip this back right now. And uh, I'm also going to uh, just paint in. Whoops. Paint in little bits. You want it with this kind of thing, you just want to dab little bits in there. Dab little bits. Nice. 
sounding like Bob Ross, aren't I? Let's make some happy trees. And I think that is really coming together. I'm just going to find the areas that are kind of more gray. And there it is. I think that there's a bit of a line here. I'm going to work on that. So move around. I think that is looking pretty darn good. Command zero. Yeah, you know what? If you didn't know for sure, or you didn't know that there was work on there, that's not too bad. We'll see if somebody can do better than that. Actually, I do see a little bit of a uh, little bit of work that could be used to be doing there. See if you can get yourself uh, some higher marks by doing that. All right, there we go. That's how to do the uh, Japanese garden. Submitted in Google Classroom.